Hi, I'm Patty. I'm Kim Michelle. And I'm Jill. Welcome to our podcast. It's a great day to talk. Because honestly, what day isn't a great day to talk? So join us in our conversation. A Great Day to Talk is brought to you by St. George Design. Offering complete website design, social media management, search engine optimization, Google and Facebook ad management, and many other digital and print marketing services. StGeorgeDesign.com And by Richardson Brothers Custom Homes, third generation builders who have been building custom homes in southern Utah for over 25 years. They will take your dream home from concept to completion. Contact RichardsonBrothers.com Hi, everyone. Welcome to It Is a Great Day to Talk. I'm Kim Michelle, and I'm here with my great friends, Jill. Hello. <laughs> and my equally great friend, Jill. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm just seeing if you're paying attention out there. My equally great friend, Patty. Yes. <laughs> and we are happy to be here today to discuss with you anything we choose to discuss today. We kind of have an idea, but who knows? We may choose to discuss something that just comes to us in the moment. We've yep. been friends for a very long time, and we love to get together and talk about all the fun things in the world, books, and current events. The, well, and sometimes not the fun things. Yeah, sometimes the very real things, and sometimes the real things are fun things, but honestly, sometimes the real things are not necessarily fun, nope. but they're still important things to talk about. Amen. So today, we're going to be talking about why we say yes to things that we really want to say no to. Now, it's possible that in the real scheme of things, we may be the only ones that have ever said yes to something that we really wanted to say no to. Uh, <laughs> right. Okay. It might just be us. It might just be us. Because we're special. Mm. We're very special that way. <laughs> um, and if that is the case, then maybe we are setting you up so that in the future for you, if that were to ever happen, maybe you'll be grounded in some things that you can do to maybe choose to say no when you really mean no and say yes and when you really mean yes. Or recognize that maybe you do it too. Or, yeah. And also having some, what are the reasonings, be, you know, what are the reasons behind us feeling the need to say yes when we want to say no? Yeah. I think the most important thing to take away from this conversation is that none of this is making anyone wrong or bad or it's not about judgment or anything like that. It really is just, let's just have an honest conversation and see if any of this applies to you. And if it does, does it work for you in your life? And if it doesn't, then how can you make different decisions that serve you better? That's really what it's all about. Yeah, because a lot of times we say yes to so many things that we end up suffering. Um, also, if you haven't joined us live on Facebook, you're welcome to uh, watch the live video and make comments if you have a re relate to this in any way. Yeah, we would love fire that. away. We love to read your comments. Yeah, during and our I just wanted podcast. to also mention that that's one of the things that I'm following here is just some of these comments in here. So if you see me on my iPad here. It is because I am totally killing it in this game here. But <laughs> other, than that, mm -hmm. other than that, I'm also mm -hmm. working to follow the stream here to see if there are comments and questions that you have that we want to bring to the conversation. So, you know, that's we what go. I love about you, Kim Michelle, and you too, Patty, over there, because I'm just sitting over here with myself and Aww. I don't have to focus on those things you guys take care of that <laughs> you guys take care of that <laughs> thank you for taking care of that well i um just noticed that my son just said so hard to say no when the pressure is on yeah and oh. that is a hundred percent true depends on who's asking what the value of the activity is like how important it is to that person and sometimes even when you shouldn't say yes you you do because of the pressure mm -hmm. pressure could come from within or with you know external as well but why do we do it and why are we not okay with like creating that boundary around what we are capable of you know patty i totally relate to what christian is saying there mm -hmm. because that's one of my main drives is that 
for so many reasons, it's so hard for me to say no, mm -hmm. you know, instead of saying the easy yes. The easy yes is always easier to say in the moment and harder to focus and deal and, and kind of get through mm -hmm. after it's been said. Do you think, Jill, for you that it's, it's hard to say no regardless of who is asking or, and regardless of what the ask is? Or do you find it harder depending on who's asking and what the ask is? Well, okay, let's put, let's first things first. With my teenagers, it's not hard for me to say no. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is that. In probably 90% of the situations, <laughs> let's be honest, let's be honest. But when it comes to being asked for things or help or uh, support or um, extra work or any of those things, I am a people pleaser mm -hmm. and I get really tied into how I'm perceived and what others think about me. Mm -hmm. And so I, over many years of the same behavior have said yes to so many things because of those first three motives, mm -hmm. those first three motives are really hardcore driven mm -hmm. inside for how, me. How someone looks. How I look towards someone, how I'm perceived, and what others think about me. I yeah. guess they all they are, all are the, the same, same thing. Yeah. I guess they're all the same thing. And and let's add in guilt. Guilt mm -hmm. is a huge thing for me as yeah. well. What, what in the world happened for us to feel guilty about saying no to something that we need to say no to. What do you think that is? Yeah, where'd that come from? Why did we learn to be yes, Well, you know what, I can pleasers. tell you where mine is. Mine is all about self-esteem and motivation mm -hmm. and wanting to look like I'm on top of it and have things under control. Mm -hmm. So guilt is a big thing for me. And also fear. I have a lot of fear around, well, again, that ties into how I'm perceived and, mm -hmm. and what mm -hmm. people think about me. So those are some big ones for me. Those are some really, really big ones. External expectations are really big. My own internal expectations for myself. I'm not really nice to myself. Mm -hmm. My self-talk a lot mm -hmm. of the time has a lot to do with, well, if I can't get that done, then what the heck? Mm -hmm. Or... If I can't get that done, then so and so will, and so and so will. And then they'll look better. Better, mm -hmm. and I, and then again, that like is mm -hmm. the perpetuation of my internal talk about my self worth. Right. And da 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 da. And you'd think at fifty three, I'd be over it, but you know, I think that that's kind of this awakening that I'm going through right now, is I'm getting to where I'm really zoning in onto why those things matter to me so much. Don't you think that there's something really amazing? So all of you who are just babies in the world, which is anybody who's under 50. Yes. Well, Patty. Yeah, you know, Patty's 50. Okay, never yeah, mind. Yeah, I'm almost barely, 52. Well, <laughs> barely. Oh, she's, barely that, yeah. she's barely over the line. <laughs> Had a lot of work but done. But don't you think that <laughs> is a, a lot of work? A lot of so work much. done. <laughs> Um, don't you think that is part of the beauty of this next phase is that you get to step back for a moment and you get to start to be in this process of, okay, I don't have to just keep being on the hamster wheel. I can step back for a second and now I can really start to evaluate how am I showing up in the world and is that how I want to show up in the world? And now I can start evaluating what really works for me and what doesn't work for me. Now it'll, it'll it might take the next fifty years to figure that out, right? But yeah. at least that's a different part of the journey, right. which I think is kind of exciting. I have such a hard time, even when someone says, "Hey, do you want to go to dinner?" I feel complete obligation to do it, even though I shouldn't. I don't have time hey, or wait. money, or except for wait. today. Wait, yeah, because we <laughs> said we called Patty and said we're. We're going to dinner, That's right? Different. We didn't even ask, did we? Did no. we ask? There's no, never we just an ask. No. I just, I it's don't want to let. Yeah, I don't want to let someone down. 
Did you want to let us down? Would, I did. would have you rather wanted to say no, honestly? No, not today. No, Patty, let's be real. <laughs> she looks Patty. Great. <laughs> no, but some, no. It, and it also, we talked about this too, is, uh, you know, the fear of missing out. If FOMO. I, FOMO, and that's a real thing. You, you yeah, say yes it, it because it was you don't want to miss out. At dinner, you would have totally <laughs> missed out. That, yeah, and of course I'm not talking about the two of you. <laughs> There's some shame, but it is really, it is hard for me to say no, because I don't want someone to feel let down right. or not valued if I said no. And I, and I, yeah, I don't like that. I want to, I want to be able to say no without any feeling at all. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like, oh gosh, I can't. Gosh, I now, can't. if I really can't, if I have, a, I feel like I have to have a real good reason why I can't do something and then I don't feel the guilt. Yeah. But if there's no real reason other than I don't feel like it, that's when I have to say. So yes. I think that is that is the real opportunity here. Is that is to grow into the space where we choose to say no because we choose it mm -hmm. for no other reason. Right. <gasps> not because there's any other obligation, mm -hmm. not because anyone else is expecting it from us, but we just choose it because we choose it and that is more than enough. Okay. Jill had mm -hmm. an epiphany. I did have an epiphany. <laughs> Sorry, I had this epiphany. That is, there is one area in my life that I have over the last couple of years said no to because I don't want to. And that is in exercise. Mm -hmm. And this is like, this really has been this is huge. a huge thing for me because I, for the last couple of years, have started to say, no, I don't want to do that. And I've really, really. And you've been okay, you've been been okay clear, with it. Clear. Yeah. 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 I really have. I don't know why that one hasn't really occurred to me. That's the one area in my life where I will say, nope, I don't want to do that. You know, people will say, friends will say, let's go hiking. Nope, I don't want to. Or let's go do this. Nope, I don't want to. I don't want to leave my house tonight. I forgot that I do that in that one area of my Where you life. can just say, I don't want to. I don't want I, to. No, and I don't because, want to. Because, and that's enough. I don't need a rationalization. Right. I don't need an mm -hmm. excuse. I don't need because it's competing with something else. I simply don't want say to do no it. because I choose no. Yeah, so... This is what I want to ask from you, Patty and Kim Michelle, is when does the, all of the rest of my life transfer into that same practice? Because not the rest of my life is in that same practice. Mm -mm. I think you get to do your work to figure out, okay, so what's happened for me in that space that I've made it okay for me there? Right. And what is the thinking that goes on for me there that's made it okay and then how do I translate that into other spaces? Like, how am I owning that that's just my decision? And it, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about that because it's my decision and my decision alone. And then how can I then translate that into the other choices and decisions I make? And here's what's so amazing about that, Jill, is once you're so clear and clean on that for you, now what are you choosing? My own thing. Your own journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're probably doing that more than you've done it before, the exercising of your own choice and choosing, mm -hmm. totally free from anyone else's expectations or whatever. And you're choosing when you do it and when you don't, totally for you and having a completely different experience around it. Yeah. You're welcome. Are you? Yeah. I feel like you're cured. <laughs> like She's cured. I'm cured in that one wow. area. I want the rest of this to transfer into the rest of mm -hmm. my life. It's the same process. Uh, well, I don't feel like it is professionally or when other people are involved. Mm -hmm. With my own self, I can, I'm much more confident in that, but... How about you? Like enough about, mm -hmm. about me. Oh, there's never enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I, to be honest, I would rather someone, if I ask someone, hey, can you do this or not? And I would rather them say, no, I can't, then I'll try or let me see. Um, I, I would also rather them say no or yes, rather than not text me back or call me back. 
So I would rather people be up front with their ability to say yes or no either mm -hmm. way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so why is it so hard for me to be up front with, no, I, there's no way I can do that. Or, That's a no, really I'm not great question. Make it. I Patty, think that is a great question. Do you think, Patty, Patty that you're nicer <laughs> to others? Than you are to yourself that you give more um grace leeway and grace yeah do well, you give more grace to others than you do to yourself probably because i don't want their feelings hurt so i would forego my own well-being to make sure i helped or did or went or whatever whatever it was right mm -hmm. i and i guess it would depend on the person i do feel and i don't know about you guys but there are certain people we're obligated to say yes to. Is there? Yes. Or are there, there are. I mean? Yeah. Well, like, mm -hmm. like I think family, there are, maybe? Well, I think there are people that it's more difficult mm -hmm. to, um, to say a true no to. Mm -hmm. Whether we're obligated to, I think that's another, because I think the most powerful thing we can always choose into is to know that we're at choice. And if we choose into yes or we choose into no, either way, mm -hmm. the most powerful thing is that we chose it. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if I choose into yes, let's say that I'm doing something wonderful. There's air quotes there. You might not be able to see that, those of <laughs> you who are just listening. Mm -hmm. If I choose to do something wonderful for, let's just say, my mom, mm -hmm. and the whole time I'm in complete resentment right. around the fact that I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Is it wonderful? No. 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 And that's the other thing too. So if you chose yes, then own it, choose it, do it. Yeah. Be in it 100%. Be in it. Yeah. And if you can't, then yeah, certainly there are things like I really need to go help this person. And yeah. so I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm not going to hundred percent love it. And I wish I was napping instead, but you know, I read an article in um, Forbes magazine. Well, actually it was Forbes.com. But um, one of the things that was suggested by the author was that if it's the wrong choice, we rationalize and justify in our head instead of just stepping into it without that rationalizing and justifying. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's really a great way to think through decisions. Am I rationalizing why I have to do this? Am I rationalizing why I should do this or do I just want to do this? Mm -hmm. And that would be a really powerful practice to just have as a regular everyday mm -hmm. decision-making process. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. I, I think there's lots of reasons we, why we say yes to things that it would serve us to say no to. I think fear of rejection or mm -hmm. somebody being mad at us yep. or yep. Um, guilt guilt for for guilt sure motivated. can uh -huh. you guys still see the g <laughs> on my forehead uh -huh. it's starting that it's, brand is yes. start that branding that you had there is starting to fade a little bit but yeah well, and the more my hair recedes to the <laughs> brighter it becomes. you know or it could be to avoid conflict at all mm -hmm. some people are really conflict averse and so just to avoid the conflict they'll just continue to say yes the truth of the matter is that there'll always be people who will know you probably better than you know yourself so they they'll know if you're conflict averse so they'll continue to ask because they know you'll continue to say yes be, just to avoid the conflict you know there'll be people in the world who will manipulate and take advantage of whatever that is for you until we choose to stand up in that space and own our space around it. Mm -hmm. um, and I know for me, as much as I might talk about even this kind of stuff and even coach around it, I, even today I can say that I know for me that um, one of my big, the way in which I create value for myself is hard work. I see myself right. as being a mm -hmm. hard worker so when you make a request of me that plays into my perceived value of being a hard worker and you make a request that 
is perpetuating my value is based on the work that I do, then it becomes really difficult for me to say no to that right. because my value is so integrated with right. working hard and staying late and doing the extra project and making oh. sure everything gets done. And making sure the right people see you do it because right. you want to be That's... valued. And I just have to point out this last comment Christian said the other end of this is being able to accept a no from someone else and respect the dichotomy of encouraging participation but not manipulating. Uh, yeah. And so being able yeah. to accept a no from someone else is also really important. But why is that sometimes easier to, I'm okay, like if, I, if somebody says no, I can't go or I can't this or I can't do that, I'm good with it. Right. Um, because it really isn't about the other person. It really is always it, is, is about, about us. us. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. uh, and that sucks sometimes, honestly, yeah. because it right. would be nice if we could just make it about the other person. Right. But ultimately, it really is about if, if I see myself always saying yes to things that it would serve me to say no to, then really it's because I am at some level – creating my value and my worth on what I do and not what I be. Yeah, right. That's interesting because and what I was just going to say, I want you to talk about your your test and what that oh, so, meant for you. Right. So this this topic has really because it's something that I battle with all the time, really. And I want to, I'm a helper too. I, you mm. know, the oldest of five and I I'm a I like to solve problems. I like to get things done. I like things to get taken care of. And I have, anyway, long story well, short. Well, and I just want you to know, Jill, I've marveled at what you will do, at what lengths you will go to help other people mm -hmm. and how thoughtful you are. And I don't know how you do it. And I, I have other friends like that as well. And I'm always like, how did you get to that? How did you do that? And are you okay? You're and I also you said, you guys are the same. I said, I'm glad you're creating some boundaries around those things, but don't ever create a boundary around me. <laughs> yeah, for me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If don't I say call, no to us. Uh, no. <laughs> I, you know, I, uh, I have had to do a little boundary creating because the last couple of years have been really emotionally and physically exhausting. Mm -hmm. But this topic has really brought to mind this new uh, Brene. Hello. We all <laughs> have figured out how much I like Brene. We all but do. She has written this. She wrote this book 10 years ago called The Gifts of Imperfection. And um, she and her sisters are doing this six part podcast around this book. And at the beginning, you do this quiz. And in this quiz, it's called the wholehearted inventory. And so I did this wholehearted inventory today. And it has these guideposts. 10 guideposts um, and and our and your daring values and part of the guideposts uh, was reading really kind of shocked me because I thought oh okay that sounds a lot like me so um, living letting go of comparison and um, becoming more into creativity letting go of scarcity and fear of the dark Letting go of exhaustion as a status symbol mm -hmm. and productivity as self-worth. Mm -hmm. And that one right there, the productivity as self-worth mm -hmm. is huge. And I come by it rightly. My parents are and were the hardest working people I know on this planet. And there's just this expectation well we're provosts and that's how we do it mm -hmm. oh that's yeah what we, yep. Do. Yep. we, we work always hard. work we don't sit down we, exactly yep. because our value is tied to our productivity right. yep. right. and we must we're probably if if we're not exhausted then we didn't do enough exactly mm -hmm. yeah yep. and it's always been the big joke that if i sit around for you know more than five minutes then i fall asleep because my body's like oh okay we're done for the day but you know no, we're really not that's not serving well i'm working on it not being something that serves me um, anxiety is a lifestyle, self-doubt and the supposed to, I'm supposed to do mm -hmm. that. That's what mm -hmm. I'm supposed oh, to yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Um, being cool and quote, always in control. I perfectionism and what people think. So every single one of these guideposts of these 10 guideposts spoke to me in ways that I thought, 
but this is how I am and this is how I'm supposed to be. How can I not be who I am without ranking high in those right. categories? Well, what are we supposed to be like was ingrained. So that's been, a, that's a socio sociological issue. Do right. you know what I mean? Like, this is what we're supposed to be like. This is what we're supposed right. to look like. So you have to say yes, or you have to help, and you have to do this, and da da da. And, yeah. and so then that t ties to our self worth. Mm -hmm. Well, and don't you guys think too, Patty and Kim Michelle, that even though there's these guideposts, I s I want to do what I say yes to. Mm, yeah. Except for when I don't, and I don't think I'm always. Well, I don't know that I'm always honest about what I don't want to do. I don't want to exercise and I'll say, well, well I don't want to exercise. I think that is that in an, that right there is the truth. I think we want to do the things that we genuinely desire to say yes to. I think we want to be a hundred percent committed to those things that we genuinely yearn to say yes to. What happens though, when we say yes to everything, is that then it takes away from the things that genuinely are part of who we are. Sure. Mm -hmm. at, at our core, at our genuine, authentic self, when we are spending time uh, doing things to try to prove who we are, that time takes away, that time, resource, energy, whatever that is, takes away from being in the space of who it is we genuinely authentically at our core are i can totally get behind that yeah and at the same time what i also worry about is my dearest friends and family who know that i'm in the process of creating some boundaries or working around some boundaries when i say yes i want to do that then they think no she really doesn't or they don't ask because they're afraid to You'll say yes. I'll say yes. Mm -hmm. But then, so that's kind of, a, I don't know if that's how it has been for you guys. I don't want people to know that. And I don't want people to think that I don't want to help. Does that make sense? Right. Because no, I, yeah. like, if I say yes, then I really mean it, even though I'm saying that sometimes I don't. But that's, I, see, that's like so, such mixed messages. I hate right. that. Well, I guess one of the things that we should identify with that, Jill, is um, are you saying yes because you want to do this for what reason? So that you look good? So that yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And if, if you're, you're saying yes and you want to do it so you look good, is that really authentic? No. And that's when it comes to my people, I don't say yes because of how it makes me look. It's because they're my people. Right. Yeah. Right. That's your heart. That's, that's my that's heart. That's you at your authentic self. Mm -hmm. And I, I, for me, I, that, that's the number one thing when you're in self-examination that works, I think, is to step back, to pause mm -hmm. <laughs> for a moment before right. you say yes, is to pause and say, right. okay, what is the thinking that is driving me in this moment to say yes or to say no? Mm -hmm. Um is fear driving me? Is wanting to be accepted driving me? Is my heart for service, genuine right. compassion? Is that what's driving me? If you, if we can, if I can discern what is the thinking that is truly driving me in my decision to say yes or no, and if what's truly driving me is part of my authentic self, then I know that the decision I make there will be genuinely part of who I am. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So now we have to go just kind of go back, Kim Michelle, to what are some of those smaller things where people are like, hey, can you um, pick this up for me on your way? Or can you do this? A little things, fine. But when we are like, oh, there's no way I can do that and get all the things done that I needed to do. Mm -hmm. And, but you say, yes, I will do it. And then forego some, like, I'm like, okay, well, I, I guess I'll cancel the gym or. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because all of this is really about setting ourselves up to win in our life the best way mm -hmm. we can. Sure. And other people as well, because yeah. I don't think other people are in an ideal world want us to be 
breaking commitments, and we don't want to be breaking commitments either. Right. Unless it's exercise. <laughs> Unless it's exercise. <laughs> and agreed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think part is to pause, mm -hmm. you know, and don't answer if you need some time to right. really evaluate, okay, what is the thinking mm -hmm. that's driving me right now in my choice or decision? I think as a, as a, if you manage people or you work with people or you supervise people, I, I always work with my people to be in the space that says, yes, and, you know. I like yes, that. Yeah, Scott said that, yes, yeah. and. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, I can mm -hmm. do that, what you're asking of me. Yes, I can do that, and here's what it will mean. Mm -hmm. It will mean that I won't be able to complete this project. Because as the supervisor, I would want to know that because that other project really may be a higher priority for me. Sure. And so, so if, if you, you knew that, yeah, you then would I say, would say, oh, never mind, mm -hmm. never mind. I'll give this other thing to somebody else. This is a higher priority. I like that. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And. Yes, and. I like that a mm -hmm. lot. I think the other thing, too, that's helped me um, is to be uh, honest and clear so honest. about that doesn't work for me. And I think people are more willing to accept that that's fine. And they, they're usually they're fine. So they need to accept my no, and that doesn't work for me. And then maybe I don't have to feel as guilty about saying no, if I. Do you not feel guilty, Patty? Um, or do you feel guilty when you say no? Uh, it, sometimes I say yes, because I feel obligated. Mm -hmm. And that, it, and if I said no, I would feel guilty. You would feel guilty, mm -hmm. right, because that's the flip of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I I wish I didn't feel guilty. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, are yeah. you in a place where you can do that? Not feel guilty? Not feel guilty? Not no, feel I obligated? Think it, I think it's genetic. Okay, well, I don't <laughs> think it's genetic. Oh, no? Mm-mm. So what do you think it would have to look like for you to be able to say no and not feel guilty? Mm. Well, I don't feel guilty if I have a good enough reason mm. to uh -huh. say yeah. no. Well, uh -huh. what if you are the good enough reason? Yeah, that's not been a good enough yet okay, in so my life. What would it take for you to be a good enough reason? Kim Michelle's asking the hard questions. Wow, I don't feel, I don't even know. I don't know. I mean, I guess if I said, I am so exhausted, there's no way I can make it. I'm so sorry. We have to, I have to decline. Yeah. Well, then, so, but then I'm exhausted. So that's a good enough reason okay, for me to go. Okay. But then what if we just didn't even include that, but just said, oh, I can't. Yeah. But I, I can't. appreciate the opportunity and no. Yeah. And we also know is a complete sentence, right? Yeah. No, period. End stop. Yeah. yeah. No, end I mean, stop. Warren Buffett said that. I'm paraphrasing. I'm <laughs> paraphrasing Warren Buffett, just so you all know. Um, something to the effect that successful people know, know, and they use it all the time, and they don't feel bad about it ever. That's the part. Don't feel bad. They about don't it. feel bad mm -hmm. about it ever. So, yeah. well, and I. I mean, what do you do not to feel bad about it? Oh, I, I feel bad about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, listen, I'm, I'm on my journey just like, mm -hmm. you know, everybody else. But right. I think that's the, that's the ultimate objective is to be able to grow yourself into that place mm -hmm. that you know that you're, you're enough, you're whole and complete just as you are, and that you don't have to say yes in order to gain acceptance or value or... Right. From some outside mm -hmm. kind of source or influence. Mm -hmm. And that, and in that space, you're empowered to just say no because no is what you're going to say. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. I got to get. We're going to practice get... a world of no's this week. Yeah, so, and I think, all I think... of you who love us, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but also, if I say yes, I want anyone to know that I mean yes. That, yes, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's what that. I was just saying, yeah. right? That's yeah. exactly what so, I was and just I, saying. So I want people to be honest with me, and I want them to be okay with me being honest back. And if I say, yes, I can, I want that to be legitimate and 
Right. If I say no, it has no bearing on how I feel about that other person. Right. That's, That's one the, of the liter in the mm -hmm. literature. It says, you know, yep. you're separating the experience from the person. It's it, I'm saying no to this question or this opportunity. It has nothing to do with the person who is posing the question of the opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's that is for me right there. The mm -hmm. core is what you just said, Patty. Just. I don't want them to question what it is I'm saying that I'm mm -hmm. doing. Mm -hmm. I don't. And part of that is just our clear communication. You know, when when uh, Scott and I first got married, and we were pretty young, and we were both debate coaches, and, well, we were in college at the time, but we were at debate camp, and, um, debate camp, and <laughs> it was the summer, and, um, you know, we had a very short period of time for lunch, and he came up to me and he said, hey, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go have lunch with one of the other coaches, and we're gonna go over to Subway. And do you want to come? And I'm like, uh, we only have like 20 minutes, and that's not even enough time to be able. I, I mean, it's totally irresponsible. We don't have enough time to be able to get off property, off campus, and get back on campus and eat and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm in the line, and he's like, "So is that a no?" <laughs> and I'm like. Well, I, I, I mean, that's that, how is that not even going to work? You, you can't even get there and get back. And he's like looking at me like, eh, and? And I'm so I say, well, I guess you can go if you want to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everyone in that room knew I was saying no. no. Right. Uh -huh. He hears, okay, I'm out of here. Right. So he goes, right? I'm furious furious with him he comes back he has he cannot understand why I am so angry with him because he clearly heard me say what I said which was no well I said what you imply you can go <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought he should clearly hear no mm -hmm. uh, and that's part of this whole conversation <laughs> right, right is you really get to be you get to own your stuff in this whole situation, right? We get to own how we're showing up in the process. And when I, I, sometimes when I say yes to things and I'm so mad the whole time, the whole mm -hmm. time I'm angry about spending my whole weekend doing something I didn't want to do when I'm the one that said yes. Yeah, we, and we I'm can't mad do at that. the other person. Yeah. Well, you can't do that. You've got to be honest and yeah. be forthcoming yeah. and honest with ourselves that we said yes. And so we can only be mad at ourselves, yep. yeah, but not at the other person. So yeah. examine your driving force. Mm -hmm. Pause for a moment before you say yes. Step back, look and think, think to yourself, what is the thinking that's driving me to say yes or no here? It doesn't matter whether you say yes or no as much as understanding why it is you right. would be saying yes or no. I said yes because if I said yep. no, I'd feel guilty. So I'd rather... It's almost like a martyr. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I'd rather not feel guilty. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. And don't provide an excuse or a justification because then you just open the door for them to come back and ask again. Right. <laughs> well, and, and also remember, if it's something that you do choose to do because you want to show your stuff, you desire to do it, then step into that. Yeah. yeah. Find some joy in it. Stepping mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. that. Right. Absolutely. So I want to do that, this so that I, someone knows I'm good at I'm this. I'm good at this. Yeah. Right. No, that's exactly it. I or think maybe it, I want to do this because I know I'm good at it. Whether you see it or not. Right. I know I'm good at it. Right. You know, right? Ties to personal yeah. values. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ties to Absolutely. confidence and personal va Absolutely. values. Absolutely. Your internal drive. Your yes. internal experiences. Yes. Absolutely. Jill, Jill do you think it would... Um, be helpful if we posted that link on that test you gave. You oh, took. I think that would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. we'll do Can that. We post that yeah. to our platforms. Yes, absolutely. I'll do that when okay. um, we're done here. Yeah. And also, what was it called? It's called the Wholehearted Inventory. It is from um, the Brene Brown um, podcast that she's doing with her sisters. 
um, her two sisters. Um, why can I not find it? Because and we'll I'm post not. it all. We'll post all that information yeah. um, on all of our on and it gets, everywhere we post. It gets behind your motives, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the wholehearted inventory. Mm -hmm. um, what do you need to let go of in order to cultivate? So, letting go of what people think in order to cultivate your own authenticity. Learning to let go of perfectionism in order to cultivate self-compassion. Yeah. And this is tied around her book um, called The Gifts of, of Imperfection, Imperfection. Mm -hmm. yeah. which is going to be a book that I take with me to Maine. Because uh, I'm leaving. Yes, Jill's on leaving us. Jet plane. Don't, don't, don't know, know when I'll be back again. No, it's not when. It's don't know if, if I'll no, 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 be no, no, back no, 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 no. She will be back because <laughs> we'll go get her yeah. and bring her back <laughs> yeah, we in will. the luggage carrier if yes. necessary. Yeah, so this is mm -hmm. something in each one of these, um, they call them guideposts. There's 10 of them. Um, and, and so that's going to be part of my continued unraveling. Great. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you, ladies. We're going to um, move to the uh, gentle nudge. Oh, gentle, gentle nudge. nudge. Um, just nudge. as a, oh, I'll just go first with the gentle nudge because the gentle nudge is around our um, book for this month, which we'll be doing next week. Jill will be joining us via, oh, I always, always wanted, Jill will be joining us via satellite <laughs> <laughs> on our call that next week so yes. uh, to discuss our book. Uh, the whole town is talking. So you pl have still have plenty of time if you haven't started it yet to uh, breeze through that book and join us. Yes. Also, if you didn't hear our podcast on the afterlife, you might want to go and listen to that. I think that's episode eight. Eight. Uh, take job, a listen of Patty. that and uh, join us next week for that. So that's my gentle nudge. I will attempt to sit outside next to the ocean while okay. we're chatting. Nice. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Thank you. You're what welcome. Uh, gentle nudge? What's your gentle? Oh, gentle. Okay. <laughs> she's already yeah, there. She's, she's already. She's, she's like gone. Gone. Yeah. She's already there. Yeah. Um, my gentle nudge is to pause and think about why you're saying yes to something when saying yes to something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Like that. And that's I love like it. my own self. Self. When I call myself self, you need to pause. That's my going to be my gentle nudge this week as well. Great. I love Good. that. Miss Patty? Oh, I don't know. My gentle nudge would be to um, uh, travel a little bit. I just got back from yeah. Texas and started in San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, Waco. It was a whirlwind of a trip and awesome. And I had never been to Texas. So if you haven't been to Texas, put it on your bucket list because... It was super fun, but very hot and muggy. But Beautiful. actually, I guess it wasn't as bad as it, it can be at this time of the year. But we had a great time. So, yeah. Good get out there. and see the world. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Um, and just as a um, mention for the future, this week we talked about uh, saying yes when, you, when it would serve you to say no. A future show we're going to talk about saying no when it would probably serve you to say yes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that on a future show. Blue Bowl. Blue Bowl. Let's go. Blue Bowl. All right. I'll go. Okay. Let's see. Mine is, what made me smile the most this week? The most um, was... Two nights ago when we watched, we were watching the Golden Knights go Golden Knights. We're in the Stanley Cup playoffs and they won in overtime. And I was so happy. Yay! It's been so much fun to watch them every other night for the last several nights. And when they win tomorrow night, we get to continue. Awesome. Woohoo! Yes. All right. This says biggest accomplishment of the week. Um... Wow. <laughs> going and getting back. Wow. To yeah, he, I, yeah. You had quite out, a week. I had, I had, we had quite a week. It was a lot of fun. Two concerts. 
uh, a lot of miles on our rental van. And, and you saw a big Shaq. person. Oh, my Shaq biggest attack. accomplishment of the week is getting my picture taken with Shaquille O'Neal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. yeah, that was fun. That was uh, literally was, and figuratively. He is enormous and was so kind. That's yeah, so great. So that was a fun. I don't know that I accomplished something, but it happened. That was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we did have to ask, and that yeah. was scary. Yeah, and, and he yes. said yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we hurried and Googled to see if he's likely to say yes or not. <laughs> 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 or my friend April uh, did, and she she said he, he, he likes his fans, so it's okay. So yay. then we dared. Yeah, perfect. There you mm -hmm. go. Thank you, Shaq, for making uh, me friends. Mine week. is what am I looking forward to? So what I'm looking forward to this week is that tomorrow is my honey's 60th birthday. So Scott Pullen, we just celebrated our 40th wedding anniversary. It's going to be his birthday tomorrow, his 60th uh, birthday. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with him and uh, celebrating him. Uh, he is just such a gift in my life. He's amazing. And so a shout out to you, Scott Pullen. I love you. You are such a gift in my life. So happy thank birthday. you, everyone. Yeah. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Um, Join us next week. Yeah. Join us for a book. Every, uh, the whole town is talking. A whole town's talking. Yeah. On a great day to talk. So we'll see ya. <laughs> Bye. Happy yeah. week. Thanks for listening to It's a Great Day to Talk. Be sure to follow and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform. And until next week, get out there and talk. This has been a production from A Podcast Studio.